Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Karagasianu, the medical director of the Breast Center, and I have with me Monique Burchard. She's a nurse practitioner, and she's the leader of our high-risk and benign program. We've decided that this year, um, uh, for Pink Breast Cancer Awareness Month, we will be doing some informational webinars that patients can benefit from. So today, you know, one of the most common questions that we're getting, we get is um, regarding dense breasts. So today, Monique will walk us through um, what the definition of dense breasts, she's gonna show us some uh, pictures and just put it in perspective for us as to the meaning of this dense breast and, and how that plays into the screening for each patient. Should there be individualized screening for dense breasts? So Monique, uh, I'd like to introduce you, Monique. Monique. Thank you, Dr. Kravisiano. I see a lot of patients um, refer to me with dense breast tissue, and most patients come in not really understanding why they've been referred to our center. So let's start talking about dense breasts and why does this matter? Well, in order to understand dense breast tissue, it's important to understand what types of tissue are in a breast. Um, so our breasts are made up of glandular tissue, which is the milk making lobes, the, the glands that make milk and the ducts through which that milk travels. Also the connective and fibrous tissue, such as the ligaments that hold the breasts up and fat tissue that fills in the remainder of the breast. If you look at this picture here, you can see that the yellow area is the fat tissue. And we love fat on mammogram because we can see right through it. But of course it's not, it doesn't consist completely of fat. These grape-like structures are the glands, the milk-making glands, and you can see the tubes that come from them. All of these create the density of the tissue within your breast and make it more difficult for us to read a mammogram. So those of you who have dense breasts probably get a letter sometime after your mammogram letting you know you have dense breast tissue and we did what we could didn't find anything in your breast, but we can't guarantee that there's nothing there because of the density of your breast. Currently, there are 38 states and the District of Columbia that require some type of reporting to patients when they have dense breast tissue. Um, and this is only assessed by mammogram. You may feel dense, your provider may tell you that your breasts feel dense, but the assessment of your breast density only occurs with your mammogram. So this is an interesting um, map showing you all the states in the hot pink that have some type of requirement that women need to be notified of their breast density. Um, each state has a little bit different law and you can see there are a few states that don't have any requirement whatsoever. But not every state has laws stating that insurance companies need to pay for enhanced screening. The states that have the black diamond have laws that require insurance companies to pay. And hopefully we'll see that increase as, um, as time goes on. Yeah, I'm glad, um, Monique, you brought this up, the, the law and, and the letter, because that causes a lot of confusion. And I think it's, it's hard on patients and primary care physicians. Essentially, the letter tells patients that the uh, breasts are dense and the sensitivity of the mammogram is not as good. So it's not as good as at picking up cancers. But it doesn't give a lot of guidance as to what to do with that with that letter, what to do for the patient moving forwards. So exactly. a lot of the questions come up, you know, okay, now what? And and same thing with primary care physicians, they don't have a, a good understanding of how to guide the um, the patient. And uh, the question arises, you know, I don't have necessarily have family history, but am I still at risk? You know, do I have a cancer that they're not going to pick pick up? And why do I need mammograms? So I, I definitely am. Thank you for going reviewing this. Absolutely. It creates a lot of anxiety in patients. And so I, I feel like if we can better explain it to them and set them up for appropriate screening, um, it really reduces their anxiety. So when we look at breast density on mammogram, the radiologists rate your breast density each time you get a mammogram. Um, the breast imaging reporting and data system, we call it BIRATS, classifies breast density into four categories. So A is almost entirely fatty breast tissue. And remember, I said when we looked at the picture, the yellow area was the fat, and we can see right through that on the mammogram, so we love it. But only about 10% of women have almost entirely fatty breasts. Um, next is B, scattered fiber glandular. This is found in about 40% of women. And this is 
fatty tissue with scattered glands throughout, and it still gives us a really good picture on mammogram. C is where we're starting to get into dense breasts, and C is called heterogeneously dense. Again, found in about 40% of women, but the breasts are getting more dense here, and it makes it more difficult to pick up a cancer on mammogram. And then we move on to D-density breasts, which are extremely dense. This is also only found in about 10% of women, um, but this definitely limits what can be seen. The reason it limits, if we look at this picture, over here is the extremely fatty breast, and you can see that the fat shows up as black on mammogram, well, cancer shows up as white on the mammogram. So if there were a cancer in here, it would be easier to pick up than as we move to the more and more dense breast tissue. You'll see here with the extremely dense, there's a lot of white there. And there's a lot of opportunity for something to get kind of hidden within that dense breast tissue. And this is why we recommend enhanced screening for people who have heterogeneously dense or extremely dense breast tissue. So who's likely to have dense breast tissue? Well, younger women, women within their childbearing years, and you can imagine your body knows that you may need those glands to make milk. And so you have a lot of these glands to potentially make milk. Um, women who are pregnant or breastfeeding along the same lines. Um, women who use hormone replacement therapy because we're adding hormones back into our system and the breasts are very hormonally mediated. And women with a low BMI, women who have a low percentage of body fat overall are going to have less fat within the breasts. And those who are likely to have, less likely to have dense breasts would be postmenopausal women. The body knows you're not gonna be needing to make milk anymore. And so the, the, those glands tend to shrink up some and that area can get filled in with fat tissue. Um, women who've had children and women who use tamoxifen for risk or after breast cancer. Um, are less likely to have dense breast tissue. So getting back to where we began, why does this matter? Well, women with dense breasts have an increased risk of developing breast cancer. Um, they have a lot of glands and a lot of ductal tissue in there, and those are the areas where breast cancer develops most often. Um, mammograms are harder to read in women with dense breasts, and you, you know that because you get more callbacks. Women with dense breast tissue tend to get more callbacks. And even though most of those are benign, the callbacks are because they can't see as well. Uh, fat, remember, shows as black on mammogram and the dense breast tissue shows as white, as do breast calcifications and breast tumors. This is a picture of a dense breast on mammogram. And here you can see two areas that are circled. This area here is a grouping of calcifications that ended up being a cancer in this breast. And this is a more loosely scattered grouping of suspicious calcifications. And this is a great picture, Monique. Thank you so much. I think pictures speak a thousand words, right? Um, the I want to point out also that um, you know, these are such, this is indeed such a good example of dense breast. So see all these white, white areas a mass would easily hide exactly in the areas that Monica is, is now pointing to. So um, it's, it's really important that, that we consider additional screening methods in someone that is very dense, precisely for this reason. Calcifications are hard to identify and masses are even harder to identify on, on a, a, a dense breast. Absolutely. Um, and that brings me to, well, let, let's talk about risk and what your dense breast tissue does to your risk. If we look at these two risk assessments side by side, the patient in the first risk assessment um, is exactly the same as the patient in the second risk assessment. There's no family history here. And this shows a risk assessment for a woman who's 40 years old, who started her period at 13, age of her first birth was 29, she's premenopausal, an average height and weight, never used hormone replacement therapy, no family history of breast or ovarian cancer. In this first example, you'll see for a 40-year-old woman, the average lifetime population risk is 12.9%. This woman happens to have extremely dense breast tissue. And because she has D-density, extremely dense breast tissue, her lifetime risk goes from 12.9% up to 18.9%. Now take that same woman and bring her breast density down to a B, which is scattered fibroglandular. 
much easier to see on mammogram. Her risk goes down to 8.6%, less than that of the average woman because of these other factors. But the change from 18.9% with an extremely dense breast to 8.6% with a header, with a scattered fibroglandular breast is significant. And this is why dense breast tissue affects your risk. You can see it, a good example of it right here. Absolutely, so, thank you. When you have dense breasts, what do we do about them? Well, you should have an evaluation in our high-risk clinic um, because both your personal risk factors and protective factors contribute to your overall risk of developing breast cancer. Each person has their own individual factors that really need to be assessed. And then we'll recommend a personalized screening plan for you based on your risk. If you fall into our high-risk category, your screening recommendations will be different than if you have dense breasts and you fall into an intermediate or average risk category. And just for example here, when we talk about how we can't see masses as clearly on a dense breast, at a minimum, when you have dense breast tissue, annual screening mammogram is recommended, but we often supplement that annual screening mammogram with full breast screening ultrasound six months later. That increases the sensitivity of a mammogram and helps us find what we call interval cancer, something that occurs in between that full year of waiting between mammograms. So this photo shows a simple cyst on ultrasound. You can see it's round, it's completely black on the inside. It's a, it's a great example of a simple cyst. But this photo, this shows a cancerous mass on ultrasound, much different look. And this is something that may not be picked up in an extremely dense breast on mammogram. Have you seen these? So uh, yes, and and uh, as you know, we've we've had multiple examples now where um, uh, screening ultrasound has picked up on things that we did not see on mammogram, and certainly as we will be discussing in our high risk webinar, um, how MRIs have contributed to us picking up uh, occult lesions, so lesions that are not seen on mammogram, which okay. brings me to a question that arises occasionally, Monique, um, is that patients will say. Well, if the mammogram is not good for my breasts, why should I have it? Should I have the mammogram or maybe I should just have annual ultrasounds or annual MRI? So, so what, the, what do you normally tell those patients? That's a very good question. And mammogram is still the standard of care and what is recommended for screening for every woman age 40 and over. And then of course, some other women based on risk. Uh, but mammogram is the only screening modality that shows calcifications. And calcifications um, are indicative of some type of underlying uh, process going on. So depending on the look of the calcifications will depend on how suspicious they look and what our next steps are. But we don't see calcifications on MRI or on ultrasound. So it's important to continue getting your annual mammograms. Exactly, exactly. So the thank you, Monique. That was such a perfect explanation. And you know, for, for patients with dense breasts, uh, to recapitulate, anything that we do is in addition to the mammogram. So mammogram is is remains the standard, and and ultrasound and or MRI is in addition to to that. Thank you. These are excellent photos and ex excellent examples. Thank you. So we thank you for joining us today for our educational session on dense breast tissue, and we hope you'll join us in the coming weeks um, to learn about factors that influence your risk of developing breast cancer. If you have questions, please contact our office at 508-482-5439 uh, for a consultation for any breast-related concerns. Thank Excellent. you, Dr. Carabasiano. Thank you. Thank you, Monique.